All right, so here we have the SR20DT crank timing crank gear. Here is the old one. Uh, I guess while I was putting on the timing chain, it slipped off a link or it fell somewhere. And while I was turning it over by hand, this happened. You can see where it's actually broken right there and where all the teeth are missing. Uh, good thing I cranked it over by hand because all that would have been floating around in the engine had I tried to start it with the key. So I found all the metal pieces in the oil pan. So I don't think it damaged anything else other than this gear right here. Uh, I inspected the timing chain. And everything seems to be okay. There aren't any cracks or anything in the timing chain. And everything else seems to be alright. Uh, hopefully there are no bent valves in the head. Uh, I'm pretty sure everything is okay in the block. But I don't know. That's a problem for another day I guess. But here's the new one I ordered from Nissan. Uh, you can find them all out anywhere. Pretty much eBay, FR Sports. Uh... Also, another piece that I ordered, I didn't really have to, but I just went ahead and got it since they were so cheap. It's this uh, Woodrow key. Very important. Very, if I grab it, this little key right here, very important to have. Uh, if you lost yours or you're just damaged, they're really cheap, uh, even through Nissan, through a dealership. But you can also find these, like I said, anywhere online, eBay, FR Sports. Everybody carries them. Carries them. And they're pretty uh, universal. So you might even be able to find this at your local parts store. So we'll go ahead and head out there and start getting all this back together. Alright, so here we have both of the gears beside each other. Uh, you'll have to excuse the road noise. I'm outside as usual. Wish I had a garage. I know. But anyways. Uh, just to be sure this is the right part, I counted the teeth in between each mark. So where this, this key would go to where the timing chain is actually supposed to sit at, the link on the timing chain. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then eight where that uh, colored link on the timing chain would be. So I just came over here to double check. It's kind of hard to really tell. I mean, you can just imagine it, even though some of these teeth are gone. But right here, right on top of where the key would go, would be number one. Uh, this next one beside it would be two. Sorry, two. Then three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight teeth in between where they are slotted or marked at. So now I know that I have the correct one. I'm going to go ahead and put this on. I don't think you have to, but I did just because I don't think it's going to hurt anything. But I put a little. Put a little little bit of lube on there so it'll slide on nice and easy. And there's nothing hard about this. It literally just slides on there. But before you start anything, you want to make sure your engine is at top dead center, TDC, which mine is. This cylinder number one is uh, the piston is at the very top. So that is top dead center. Explain it in a nutshell. But anyways, you just want to go ahead and slide this on. And it slides on really easy. Well, actually, you have to have these. I'm sorry, I should explain this before. You have to have this little keyway, that little slot in there, lined up with the slot on the crankshaft. So I'm going to go ahead and put this phone down, and I'll be back here to see. Alright, so we got the, the gear on the crank, like I said. If you line up the. It slides on either way, but uh, you just line up the little the slot with the little keyway on the crank. Then you want to install your your key. This little guy right here. I don't know if you can see it's a bit of a glare and a dark spot on the phone. But you just want to install your key in this little slot right here. And there's no orientation as to which way it goes. Actually it goes in with the flat side up. So you just slide it in there. You like a little bit of a scoop motion I guess. You scoop down and just slip it. So there's nothing hard about that. And I'm going to put the phone down. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we'll start doing this timing. So hopefully I'll get it right this time. <laughs> Alright, so we've got the timing crank gear installed. He also. Uh, I found it's if you 
if you put the key in first, then slide the crank gear over, I think it's a little bit easier. Then you can just kind of tap on each side of the crank gear with a rubber mallet or something. Kind of walk it back. I think that's the way to do it. But uh, that's just how I did it. Now I'm going to walk over here and show you all how to set the timing on the gear. Uh, on your timing chain, there should be at least one different color link. I've got three. I'm not sure if they come like this from the factory or somebody replaced the timing chain before. But uh, there are a certain amount of links in between the chains that will tell you which link is which if it only comes with one color link. You'll find that in the factory service manual. I don't know it off the top of my head, but just look there if you have any questions. I don't know if you can see it or not, if we're getting focused, but there is a little dot on your crank sprocket or crank gear. This is my old one, but since that tooth is here, where the dot is, I'll show you where it's supposed to line up. That dot, that dot on the crank gear is supposed to line up with the color link on your timing chain. If you don't have that link, or if it's not colored for whatever reason, you can count out the links in between, and there's a certain amount for each one. So you can figure that out pretty easily. But this little dot is supposed to be lined up with the color link on the crank gear. And this is just a theory. This is what kind of what happened to me last time. I feel like when I was putting on the head, trying to slip the timing chain and all that under the head to get all that set put on, I think somewhere along the line, the timing chain fell off this crank gear. And I think that's where I ran into all my problems. I'm going to try this. I think it'll work, but I'm not for sure. There's only one way to find out, I guess. I got a little zip tie right here. Uh, what I'm going to try to do, once I put this timing chain on back, back in the engine, I want to keep it secure. That way, when I'm putting on the head, I know that it's not going to slip off for a fact. And I think you can use, I mean, you can use whatever you want, a rubber band. Just something to eat that you can easily pull off uh, from underneath the car with the oil pan off, the lower oil pan. And that you can kind of wiggle a tool out there to break it or to break the, the rubber band or the zip tie, whatever you want to use or whatever you want to try. But this is just a theory. I want to see if it works because my issue last time was somewhere along the line, this, this timing chain fell off. And that's what happened. That's what destroyed this crank here to begin with. So we're going to try that, and I'll let you know how it works for me. Alright, so I'll show you what I got so far. Um, I'm hoping this works. This is more of a trial and error. See what works and see what doesn't. But hopefully, in my mind, I think this should work out. So hopefully it happens in real life. But what I went ahead and did was, if you can see it, I don't know if you can or not. I set the timing chain where it's supposed to be a month sprocket. I put a big zip tie on the on the timing on the timing gear around the timing chain in hopes that if for whatever reason this does fall or slip up top, it won't fall at the bottom. So that's my thinking behind that. Uh, if you're doing it by the book, it says you're supposed to drop the upper and lower oil pan, but uh, I don't have a hoist to pick the engine up off the mounts, so I can't really drop a cross member. And I've been looking for different ways to do that, but uh, I haven't really found any. But this is what I'm going to try. Hopefully it works out. What I did was, set, like I said before, set the timing chain on the gear like it needs to be, and I put a little zip tie around it. I'm hoping that once I get everything back together, I can get the zip tie off from the bottom, just kind of break it with whatever I got. You know, a pair of clips or scissors or whatever. Who, who knows? Clip it. This will still be set and everything will be the way it needs to be. But this is just like a precaution just to make sure this timing chain doesn't slip off the bottom. I uh, went ahead and put the exhaust gear exhaust gear on the timing chain and I zip tied that too. And you can see, I don't know if you can or not, but right here is where that colored mark is, and I lined it up with the dot. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to start slapping things back together, and hopefully it all works out. I'll let you know. 
Oh, uh, whatever the thing I just kind of thought about, and you may be one of the same thing too. Why don't I just bolt down the head, get everything put back together the way I need to, then slip on the uh, uh, front cover oil pump, whatever. Um, if I were to do that, I think when I try to put on the front cover oil pump, it's going to mess up his head gasket, uh, which I really wouldn't care since replacing the head gasket is a lot easier than doing all this set the timing junk. At least it is to me since I've done it about a million times and still haven't got it right yet. But uh, we'll see where this gets me. Hopefully this works out the way I'm thinking it does in my mind. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is scrape off all this silicone where the front cover would sit. Uh, scrape off all the silicone on the front cover and then uh, try to put this thing back together. And we'll see how that works out.